Hi guys, and welcome back to Ask Reese, where I answer your questions about real estate. Today, I'm joined with Cam Sawley. Mate. How are you? Good, mate. Thanks for having a sit down. Thanks. Um, Cam is a tax specialist. Uh, he works for Carrick Alien uh, Accountants, and uh, he's one of the partners here. And I just thought it'd be really great, given that uh, we've just finished a uh, financial year, um, to have a chat to Cam today, um, pick his brain about all things tax uh, when it comes to investment properties. So... Uh, Camp, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yep. So uh, I joined the Carrick Allen team uh, in 2011. Yep. Um, I've progressed to being an associate partner with Carrick Allen. Okay. Yep. Uh, mainly deal with uh, small business guys and um, primary production. So. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. No worries. So uh, in that time, though, like obviously, I mean, you'd have clients who look after property, um, big and small. Like it's pretty pretty diverse sort of yeah, experience for sure. you've so got. yeah we see i guess all ranges of um big farming land sort of sales to you know residential property sales yep. commercial property sales yeah yeah cool no worries mate given the time of year um obviously um yeah we've just finished one financial year we've just kicked off the new financial year um mate, probably one of the, the main questions that i get from time to time and it's outside of my expertise but uh mate what what, what, what do people need to prepare when they've got investment properties? What do they need to prepare uh, yep. for their tax returns? Yeah, okay. So generally, most people have an agent looking after their rental property. Yep. Uh, so annually, they'd be issued an annual summary from their agent. Okay. Uh, so that's a good thing to have. Yep. Uh, then they've got their expenses that they would have outside from the agent. So things like rates, yep. uh, interest on loans, yep. uh, water, uh, just any repairs that they've made. Throughout the year? Yep. 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 So just keeping a record of that for you guys. Yeah, so you that's can, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. And um, mate, I guess when it comes to maximising that, so obviously there's a few different things there to consider. Um, like, what's your best advice on on maximising your returns or preparing for next year's financial planning? I guess. Yeah. yeah so I guess if you've got something that you're not real sure about, whether it's deductible or not, yeah. Um, don't just scrap it. Yep. Um, keep it, ask the question. Just keep a record. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Always ask the question. You know, you can always throw it in the bin later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, yep. cool. So if there's something there, so your best advice would be around just if there's something you're not sure about, still keep a record of it. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you'd be surprised, I guess, you know, what could be deductible and what's not. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. And on the um, on the deductible side of things, and I mean, Cam and I were chatting about this before, um, there's been a few changes um, over the last couple of years, and, look, and one of those was um, Cam was telling me about um, land, and uh, that you're actually able, if your intention is for investment, yep. that you're actually able to um, claim has some de- uh, deductions on the, um, you know, costs associated with with holding the land if the intention is just for investment. Is that uh, right? To be a rental. To be a rental. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if yeah. the intention uh, is for it to always be a rental, so you've bought a block of land, um, you've hold, held it for a little while. Yep. but your intention from day one was for it to be a rental, yep. uh, then you can claim things like rates and interest against that. Yeah, right. Yep. That's pretty cool. Mm. So that's only recent. Oh, no, it's been around for a while. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. No worries. Um, and then um, I guess uh, from there, the other changes we uh, we had a chat about, well, I mean, that one's been around for a little while, but one of the newer ones that Cam was telling me about uh, was around uh, fittings and fixtures in, rent, in rental property. So something that uh, a quantitative surveyor would have come in and given you, um, I guess, what values are so you can have deductions. Like, how's that changed recently? Yeah, so historically, uh, if you bought a, an existing dwelling, um, you could get a quantity surveyor to come and do up a report for you. Yeah. Um, they'd allocate values to curtains, carpets, dishwashers, yep. uh, and you'd claim depreciation you know, over the life of the asset. Okay. Uh, the ATO's made a decision and changed that, so you actually have to incur the expense now. Okay. Uh, so you had to have bought the dishwasher, you have to have bought the carpets yep. to be able to get that deduction. Okay. Yep. So just on those items, so I mean, if you're, so, well, yeah, so throughout a financial year, if you're replacing the dishwasher, you can then claim that. That's correct, yeah. Ongoing for, yep. it, for the life of it because you've, You've incurred the expense. Yeah. So in that, on top of that too, it has to be a new asset. So you okay. can't buy a secondhand asset and claim a deduction on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, the other one that we um, like commonly get talked about, and there's a little bit of talk, which which we'll we'll talk we'll touch on uh, in a moment, uh, is around negative gearing. Now, obviously, there was proposed changes to to, to remove negative gearing, but uh, negative gearing is still 
uh, still very much a thing at the moment. Can you just give us like a, uh, I guess a brief understanding of like what it is for someone who doesn't doesn't know? Yeah. So negative gearing in its simplest form is uh, where your deductions are mm-hmm. greater than your rental income, so you're yeah. creating a loss yep. position in the with the rental. Yeah. 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 And how, like how, when it comes to negative gearing, like how many, I guess it's probably a hard thing to say. But how many people take advantage of that? Do you think like how how bigger um, if if that had been removed, like how big bigger impact do you think that would have made? Oh, it would have had a huge impact on the rental market. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it would have impacted a lot of people who hold investment properties would come under the negative gearing. I believe if it were to had a change of government that it was going to be grandfathered, so those people who held properties would have been okay. Would have been okay. Those people buying new properties wouldn't have been able to take. You wouldn't have been able to utilize it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, the other thing that uh, that I wanted to ask is that we've talked a little bit about tax planning come financial year. Um, a couple of the changes that have happened recently. What like what are the biggest mistakes that you see for someone who has investment properties? Yeah. Come tax time, like what's the biggest mistakes you see from the? Um, probably one of the biggest mistakes that we come across uh, is people throughout the financial year come into some money yep. where they've sold their personal residence or inherited money from someone Okay. because uh, they've got the debt. They often just you know sort of park the money on their investment loan Okay. just to reduce the interest. So if they've know. got, so just, just to be clear, they've sold their home, they've got money from this, they've got an investment property over here and they move that money over there. That's what you're saying. Yeah, park it in their yeah, investment so, loan. Yeah, yeah. Just whether it be short term, long term. Yeah. You know, just to save a bit of interest. Okay. Um, depending on what that money is used for when they pull it back out. Yeah. Um, can change the purpose of that loan. Okay. So you're potentially making something that was deductible interest, you know, and losing that interest deductibility. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just losing the benefit of the deduction on that investment because yeah. you've because you've parked money there. Or it's the intention, I guess, of what that money yeah. was used for on the way back out. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if you've sold your your personal residence, park the money there, and then go and buy another personal residence. Yeah. That money's private in nature, so you're losing interest deductibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is there anything else in terms of like mistakes that you see, or is that probably the main? Um, probably where people get caught, are people with hex debts. Okay. Um, so. Your taxable income might be under the threshold to repay hex, yes. uh, but they actually add that the rental property loss back, you know, for that calculation. Oh, do they? Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So and it might actually bump them back into the. Yeah, and they'll have a, a repayment. Then they'll have a repayment. So yeah. then it'll mean that potentially they'll well they'll owe where they thought they might have had a. Yeah, not had to have repay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so Centrelink uh, and private health rebates also work on that same. Principle. Same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you just got to take into consideration everything, not just. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fair enough, um, mate. The other, the other thing, uh, I guess, common question um, that some people have, or they might not be aware of, is uh, what you said to me before: is the six-year rule. In that example, we're talking about someone who sold their principal place of residence, so their home. It's not an investment property, um, but that. Oh, sorry, they've kept their property, but they've they've had to move somewhere else. Yep, um, and they've put a tenant in there. Um, and you were just telling me, explaining about how they still get the benefits of that being their principal place of residence. Yeah, that's how, right. How does that work? Yeah, so um, if you are forced to move away for work yep. um, and you're renting in an, another house, yep. wherever that happens to be, yep. uh, there is a rule, a six-year rule. Um, so your your residence can maintain that principal pres- residence status yep. for up to six years. Okay. Yeah. Um, you just can't have two principal places of residence. Yes, yeah, so you just have a single property. So in that instance, if you've been forced to move away for that period of time, you're renting elsewhere. You haven't you've got haven't got another principal place. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, um, mate. And I guess um, sort of in closing, final thing would be um, and look, I mean, there might not be much to this, but like, what what are your predictions uh, for tax in the future? Obviously, there was you know we were looking as though we might have some pretty substantial changes if there had been a change of government. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But is there anything for you that's um, sort of changed or you sort of, you see could change? Uh, look, there's probably nothing, oh, considering we haven't had the change of government, there's probably nothing too big on the radar. Yeah. 
um, probably the big change for 2019-20 financial year yeah. uh, is probably to do with the withholding tax of paying tradies. Okay. Um, so if a tradie doesn't give you an ABN, uh, legally you're required to withhold 47%. Right. Yep. If you don't do that, then you're not entitled, may not be entitled to the deduction. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. Yep. So that's, that's <coughs> probably the big change for this year. Yeah, right. Yep. Okay. So not a, I mean, obviously just something to be aware of, I guess. For yeah. The, so, so that's as of this new financial year we're in, not, yeah, one, that's not applicable. 1 July 19. Yeah. No worries. Awesome. Well, guys, look, I really hope that you got some value out of that. Cam's a fantastic resource for uh, for all things tax. Um, so, um, Cam, thanks, Heath, for, for joining me. Thanks for asking me, Rex. It's been a pleasure. Um, thanks, guys. Really hope you got something out of it, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.